Hey guys, it's Emily with Emily Barton Paints. Uh, thank you for joining me for another YouTube video today. Today we are going to be going over my favorite watercolor brushes, so let's get into it. Okay, so um, today I'm gonna be painting on um, this, it's called B Paper Company. Um, it's just a pretty um, cheap and expensive uh, watercolor paper. I actually got it at Walmart. Um, and it works pretty well for just, you know, like practice pieces. I don't really use it for, um, you know, like final pieces, but it's perfectly fine for um, doing some practice work like we're going to go over today. Okay, so um, yeah, the first brush I will show you here is the Princeton... Sorry, you can see it now. <laughs> the Princeton Neptune brush, mop brush actually. It's a size eight and it's pretty big. I like to use it to cover um, like large areas or if I'm doing like wet on wet and I use it to pre-wet my surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some color here. And yeah, you can see that it covers a large area. Um, it's a synthetic brush so no animal fur used for the Princeton Neptune series, which is kind of cool. Um, so that's that one. And for my watercolors, I'm using um, these. I guess I should grab them. Um, Royal Talons Ecoline Liquid Watercolor. Um, and you know what? These are a lot more saturated. They're almost like painting with ink and they come in these little droppers. And I'll do another video too um, on, you know, my favorite watercolors, but today we're just focusing on brushes, which brings me to the second one that I use. This is also a Princeton Neptune series, um, and it is a three quarter inch flat brush. So also good for covering large areas, um, it really just kind of depends on what I'm going for. If I want to do like more blocky shapes. So as you can see there, it's, it's a uh, more of a square shape there. Cool. Moving on to my next favorite one. Now I gotta say this one is like my bread and butter. Um, this is the silver brush black velvet um size 12 brush um and this one is partially synthetic it is made with i think some squirrel fur but i'm not really sure um it's not entirely synthetic though but it does do it's very a thirsty brush meaning it's like a sponge it really holds water for a long time so i don't have to keep dipping into my jar of water to, um, you know, moisten it again. But what I really like about it is that you can do a lot of different shapes with this one. It's got a really pointy tip. Um, I really like for doing it for um, like roses, florals, anything where you need to kind of get a thinner stroke and have a wide variety of strokes. So there you can see like the effects that you can get with it. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I've been using this one for years. Which brings me to my next two ones. Um, same, same company, silver brush, black velvet, uh, round series. This one's a size eight and um, I actually had to do a little bit of um, surgery on this one. It, I think this part's called the ferrule, but anyway, it popped off, and so I had to tape it back on. You can see right there the little band-aid. Um, but this is a size 8, and this is a size 4, so I'll show you those as well. And I'll do, again, pointy tips. You can get a, like a wide variety of strokes on these ones. show you there I'll do a little rose there and show you the great for doing petals and any kind of detail or larger areas too 
and I will show you the size four. More of a detail brush, you know, getting into those fine details, doing like very thin lines here. And you can, you can even do some leaves with them. There we go. So those are the silver brush, black velvet brushes. And this one, also a favorite of mine. This is the Princeton Heritage Round size 12. And this one is also synthetic. So no animal fur on this one either. Um, you guys know that I love doing flowers. So let's just... This one is a little bit different from the black velvet in that it is a little bit easier for water control. It doesn't pick up as much or absorb as much water, I should say, as the black velvet. And I think it's because it's synthetic, but you can still, it's still very versatile. And um, the edge is a little bit I don't know, you can see on the black velvet one, like the belly of the brush is a little bit thicker or fuller, I should say. Um, and the edges kind of, it's easier to get more irregular edges with the black velvet one, I think, than with the, if you want more uniform edges, I would go for the Princeton Heritage size 12. Okay, and Moving on, I don't use this one as much, but I do enjoy using it for making leaves and different shapes. It's the Princeton 3 8 quarter inch, 3 8 inch, sorry, dagger brush, Princeton Neptune series. Um, it is synthetic again, and I will show you what you can do with these. Here, I'll move this up, running out of room here. And this one, you can get kind of like very irregular shaped like leaves. Like I press down and drag it. You can even do like thin, thin marks or you can like do like leaves on a tree, which is kind of cool too. I'm still kind of getting used to it, to be honest. I haven't used it a whole lot. I kind of just, the round brushes are like my safety. Uh, comfort brushes, but this one I definitely am going to start using to branch out a little bit. Yeah, so little, yeah, you can just kind of make cool shapes with it. Yeah, so that is the Princeton Dagger Brush. And next we've got the um, Princeton Neptune series half oval. Some people call it cat's tongue. I like to call it oval. I don't know, it's just easier for me to say that. <laughs> um, so here we go. Um, great for making leaves. You just hold it down and you drag. Hold it down and you drag. Great for making leaves or petals and last but not least where is it oh there it is okay this is um a Windsor and Newton the Cotman line um very affordable brand for the Windsor Newton line it's called a rigger and I will show you what I do for this one it's a size one it's just like a teeny tiny little straight brush so I'm going to wet it and I'll show you. I like to use this one for doing leaves, like in landscapes or flowers. And this one just makes wonderful wispy lines like that. And if you, I'll show you what else it can do. What I like to do with it is um, like if I do like a little grassy like hilly area here like in a like in a landscape or something what you can do is while that paint is still wet you can just drag that paint and create little 
wispy leafy grass and it kind of makes like that nice uh, change in value there like it kind of lifts the paint up a little bit here to give that a little bit more texture okay guys well thanks for joining me um do like and subscribe to my channel um give this video a thumbs up and uh yeah i'd love to hear what your favorite brushes are um i'm always you know <laughs> on the hunt for new art supplies um so yeah thanks for joining me guys